Yeah, very right on time, so I don't smash this thing into the uh, wall up in front. It won't like take off on us, but it's just kind of getting loaded up for us. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hey buddy, well, I think everybody's gonna remember you from my paint video, the deck lid. Yeah, probably, right? yeah, for sure. My paint guy. Yeah. So we officially get to see Kyle's car today. Now this car's got, well, an interesting story to some. I think those that probably follow the Mustang world a little bit might know the guy that used to own this car. Yeah, if uh, you follow uh, Donkey Fix It on Instagram, that's where I got this car from. Uh, in 2010, right? I think so. I was 21 years old, and uh, I had actually looked at uh, exact car. It was a yellow. I think it was a '97 Cobra. Yes. I had a ICBC write-off black SN turd. Yeah. First, you know, kind of real Mustang, you know, experience. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Had four bang and then jumped into that car. So it was cheap and whatever. I just wanted to go bang gears and. Uh, then I wanted a nice car. Right. So it was, I had my heart set on a four valve, right? And uh, so I found this yellow Cobra with like everything done to it. it, had bare brakes and it was lowered and it was basically ready for boost. Okay, right? yeah. Um, so I bring it into my shop. Now I'm working at a pro touring hot rod building shop. So I get all of my team to check over this car because they're all very good at what they do. Yeah. And uh, so we end up finding out that there's like, there's oil leaking from the motor and the boss says, you know, where it's leaking from, I can tell you why it's one of two things. It's either gonna be the O-rings, which are easy because those cars are like a Hemi, right? Yeah. Um, and if it's not, it's a time cover and then it's a bunch of dough. Right. So there's that, there was, I think the door got hit. I think someone put a trailer hitch through the door. Ooh. So the door was a different yellow than the fender at the quarter. Right. The trunk was making uh, the back window fog up, so I learned at that time that was because your, your trunk is leaking, so there was water in like the spare tire. Ooh, that's not good. So there was like a bunch of problems with this car, so I got rid of it, and then uh, the boss who knew Donkey at the time, we were, we were building this Trans Am, yeah. and he goes, uh, he's got the same car, it's just not a Cobra. Right. But if you know his Instagram, he's got probably one of the nicest Mustang collections Oh, I know. Yeah, so, the boy's got an eye for clean, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. So he brings me the car. Now the story that I heard on the car was this car was bought in Vancouver at Brown Brothers Ford. Oh, cool. By a 50 year old guy, Brad. Right. He had that car for 13 years and then traded it back in to the same dealership. And he was there at the time, I guess. I think he knows the owner or something like that. That's kind of the story. I right. So he's there. And he runs down and says, we just got this car and I'll kind of, I'll, I'll just kind of sneak it through the back door and you can have it if you want. So he did, drove it home, put it in his collection, yeah. which had sat for two years and he had to put a battery in it to bring it to me to look at it. <laughs> and I bought it that day. Really? Hey. So I consider myself kind of the third owner, second driver because he never drove, he drove it home and drove it to me. Right. So. I bought it in 2010 with 38,000 original kilometers on it. So for all those American viewers out there, what? High teens? Yeah, 18, 19,000 K probably. Or Miles? Miles? Yeah. So, Goodness. And it had like a K&N filter on the factory tube. Right. Uh, not even like a full intake. Yeah. And MagnaFlow mufflers. Hmm. And stock 4x4 ride height with tri bars on it. And oh, those were a bad wheel, hey? Oh, Jeepers. Yeah. What did they call this yellow? 
Uh, 94, 95, interestingly enough, 94, 98, is, it's the same paint code, same color. Okay. But 94, 95, I believe it was canary yellow. Okay. And then they switched to chrome yellow. So right. as a painter, I don't, I don't ever go by the name. I go by the code. It's, right. <laughs> it's just, cause sometimes they'll, they'll do that. Just change it from year to year based on, they want to change the name of the color, but yeah. it's really the same paint code. So, right. Uh, it is canary yellow and, and original paint. The car is original paint, except with, for the exception of I put the Celine wing on. Yep. And then I didn't want, I think actually from sitting for so long, moisture came down in here and just sat in here. Yep. And it rotted out all the seam sealer. Oh. So I took it apart and redid all the seam sealer on the inside. So the inner, inner of the trunk and the outer of the trunk have been painted. Gotcha. Simply because I wanted these to match. Right. I didn't want to put this on. Even though the car is low mile, yep. yellow and red fade. Doesn't yeah. matter with age. And plus your 90s paint technology. So I didn't want to have a bright yellow spoiler and you know a faded trunk. So totally. I've actually matched this, I think, pretty well. Oh yeah. Uh, that and then I put a cobra bumper on the front. So that's oh, right, right. done as well. And then I clear coated the taillights. Okay. So the housings, the housings have been redone in yellow, and then I cleared over the lenses just to kind of give them some new life. Clean them up. Clean them. Exactly. Right. Otherwise, cars original paint. I, you know what, man? I look at stuff like that, and I, shit. If somebody asked me in the elevator, like, is your car original paint? I'd just say yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. That stuff doesn't. I don't know. I don't yeah. think it classifies as being painted. No. And when you look at these cars, like a. And you, especially in the Fox body world too, because I feel like there's just so much more of them. Yep. Find me one that's never been wrapped around a pole. Well, like, it's, like yeah. unless you're pay spending big money on a nice clean car, like they've all big been time. hit, right? So this car, I can say it's never been hit. Right. And that's kind of really, for me, like the big thing on it is, it's not original paint 100% everywhere, but that's my choice. It's not Yeah. Uh, because it's been an accident. No, I think I, I call that original paint 100%. You've yeah. just fixed some of the whatever shortcomings that age age brings along with it, right? Exactly. Yeah, man, it's clean. And yeah, Cobra front bumper. So that's been obviously painted to match too. Uh, yeah, as in years. Okay. Yeah, that's the right front bumper, hey? It just is. I feel like it's something that you just need to have yeah. in this car. Yeah. Yeah, every once in a while, well, probably more often than that, even Ford nails something. Yeah. That was one of them yeah. in yeah. those cars or these cars. Yeah. And even that spoiler was always my favorite spoiler too, right? Yeah. That's definitely the better of the two options. Cause that, uh, double decker one that they also had. Yeah. That thing was aggressive, right? You, if you're going to run that wing, then you've got to have the full kit. Totally. It just yep. ties all itself in together. It's. You can rock that one and have nothing else. And yeah. The car looks good. Yeah. It's the right amount of uh, subtle slash aggressiveness. Yeah. You know, dude, and I see the mock stereo. So when did they introduce that? I thought it wasn't until like 96, 97. No, I think that came with this body style. I think that was a 94 thing. It was just the upgrade of it was the, the upgrade options. Upgrade. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this car, again, not only uh is was that mint when i got it but it's a full load car as right. far as as far as i know like i'm not sure what exactly you know boxes are ticked to be a full load car but right it was originally a leather car oh, okay yeah and uh it's got the ashtray and it's got the you know it's a gt so it's got fog lights and it's got all that do they have the windows. isn't there a flip out cup holder or something in the console there is yeah okay right so what what you get as an option. There you go. Oh, right there. The old soda pop holder. Right. And it stays out of the way of the shifter, which is nice. Whereas the other ones, you're always kind of yeah. banging it. And then you've got like a shallow one in the front. So it's, I don't trust it. Right. Even the recreations in the, you know, like pre these cars, like Fox, whatever. This is a Fox car too. I don't know. The five O's, the original five O's, the, yeah. the arrow cars and shit with LMR's cup holder. It's great to have, but it is in the way. Yeah. But it's the only thing that you have the option to do because you got the e-brake on the other side and it is what it is. Yeah. Shouldn't be drinking in the car anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>
Yeah, these are one of my favorite wheels. Yeah, I wanted to kind of get out of, even though they're kind of like, they've become like a Mustang wheel, I wanted to kind of get out of the whole Mustang wheel thing. Like everyone's got FR 500s or Celines or, you know, you kind of stick to the same four wheels, ponies and yep. whatever, right? So I wanted something a little bit different, but uh, kind of still that classic five spoke look. Yeah. Well, and I like how, so this, what always comes to mind whenever I see these Rovos wheels is like, it's a kind of a squarer version of the Celine. Mm -hmm. But the cool part with these is when you run a wider rear, they get that staggered look to them. Yeah. So right? the front has like a slight concave, but, yeah. then, but they're a nine wide and then the rears are a 10 and a half wide. So they've got more concave. Yeah, like that's about the extent that you get with any Celine wheel yes. of concaveness. Yeah. But like with these, you can get that right angle. Oh God, yeah. You can't even see the hub sometimes. No, it's true. And then with the SN cars, you don't have the same dick around that all us Fox owners have running a big ass wide tire. Yeah, you know what? I I could be wrong, but I I think that these cars. Even though like technically an SN is still uh, Fox 90, chassis. 99 to 04. Yeah. I think because of these wide hips on these cars, these can fit the biggest tire. Right. Like if you really, these, these are rolled, but if you wanted to get really crazy and do a proper, you know, offset measuring and all that stuff, yeah, can fit like a 315, which most, like most of them are kind of capped at 315, but yeah, it's, you can just fit it really without yeah, that crazy. That's a lot of tire. Well, I mean, just the, what are they, a 295? These are a 295, they're 11 inches wide. So I was told that's the same as a Corvette. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, these look awesome, buddy. Good grief, guy, you weren't kidding. Like, this oh, yeah. thing is the full catalog. Oh yeah. So this thing's got the full Maximum Motorsports Max Grip box on it. <laughs> wow. So she's got tubular K member, uh, which moves the, moves the wheels three quarters of an inch more forward. Yeah. And then I went with the forward offset control arm. So we're an inch and a half more forward, which right. really makes this car handle exceptionally well. And I even went as far as I got Delron bushings in here. Okay. And solid steering rack bushings. Right. The, uh, <laughs> not a lot of give. The only deflection in this car is the polyurethane transmission. <laughs> so. <laughs> This is race car stuff, buddy. Yeah, I, I try to keep it, you know, as clean as I can because it was a pretty clean car, but I do drive it, right? right? Like it was built to autocross and that was kind of the whole goal with it. Yeah, so, uh, make a sweet handler. Make a sweet handler. The car's got coilovers all the way around. I went with, uh, I believe, I want to say it's their like mid uh, shock. Okay. Because I think they have offer like a sort of a comfort sport and race type deal i forget what they call them but yeah uh it's got 400 pound springs in the front and 200s in the rear so i i feel like the combo that i have there is like stiff spring with the medium shock so right it kind of makes it a little bit more comfortable to drive you know i could drive this car to calgary and right not have my teeth rattle up yeah um but it's also could do a track day and be competitive right right so like i've seen pictures from maximum where guys are taking these cars around the track and then pulling one tire off the ground because it's yeah. just so stiff. Right? Yeah, they didn't horse around at all. No. So, okay, yeah, these are Maximum Motorsports um, subframe connectors yeah, too? Yeah, so they've got the Maximum Weldon subframe connectors and then we've got the cross member here. So this is kind of cool because being a unibody car, if you're throwing this car stock around the corners, you're going to essentially feel your seat rocking because the floor pan is moving with you. Right. So what they've done is they've, I've now welded the subframes together and yep. then they have these brackets that your seat bolts to. Oh. So the seat's bolted now to the subframe connectors. So no matter what your body weight is, as you're going around a corner, yep. the seat's not rocking. So you feel so much more planted to the ground. You're part of the car. You're part of the car. And then she's got, uh, I went with the heavy duty torque arm. Yeah. And pan bar set up. So 
This thing is actually, this and the lower control arms is all the heavy duty stuff. Right. Which is good for a thousand horsepower. Jesus. And the car makes like 250. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I've done everything in this thing from a 600 horse clutch to all the suspension and the rear end has been completely gutted. It's got 31 spline axles now. It's got the 0304 Cobra diff in it, like the track lock diff. Right. Um, so the car's built for boost. Like the next yeah. thing now is a blower and yeah. then it'll be worthy of all this. And it, it's right. overbuilt, right? I, I find that, you know, growing up in, in shops and stuff, I always see like guys always just want to go straight to power. Yeah. And then that's why you see all these videos of guys, you know, a Mustang hitting the weeds stuff, hitting the weeds, right? A, Probably need a driver mod, but the, <laughs> let's be honest, the back halves of these cars don't really handle over the shit because totally the big, the big problem is like all these control arms and especially your, your uppers, they're all like C channel. Right. So when you're say drifting this thing, trying to show off at the local A and W, yep. your axle starts to twist and yep. those bind up and then it's the release of the energy that you end up in the mustang Spits you back and forth. yeah so now i've got these big beefy control arms and i've, I've eliminated the upper links because of this torque arm oh i see okay so now the rear diff cannot roll forward on right. the load and with the pan hard bar it can't move laterally okay so it's locked in and now when you dump the clutch on this thing it just puts all the power into the ground Hmm. And goes in a straight line. So this is almost like, uh, you know, like an old school, like C10. It's almost like a swing arm style. So yeah, it's been converted to a three link now. Right. Huh. So that's too cool. Yeah. I didn't realize that they dropped those upper control arms. Yeah. So well, there you, you do that when you go torque arm because right. now you don't need it. Okay. Yeah. That's some serious hardware. Holy Christ. They didn't piss around with that. No. And I, I guess we should probably mention too. So this thing's in for axle seals, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as I sit back here and look at all this hardware, it's like, holy Christ, we got to dismantle the rear end to get at uh, uh, axle seals. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun job. So that's why I, I, I figured this might be a little bit of work, but uh, I think we've got enough gear in the fridge. We'll get it done. Yeah. This is the gasket. I don't know. I see. I was gonna say the fact that. Uh, yeah, Mike. That's kind of weird. Usually, you see some like transfer from here to here. Yeah. I've always wondered about these gaskets, man. I've never ran them, just because. I don't know. I've just always felt more confident in RTV. Yeah. But uh, it came with it. Right. Well, it obviously sealed. Yeah. So there you go. See that tight? I think so. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard when you're like, I can't get on top of it. Yeah.
Kate. There she is. Uh, Kate, and you keep going that same direction again. Okay, now uh, push the axle in. Yep. Oh, yeah. She clip. Okay, and then this guy. Yeah, I'll let you do that and then I can. Oh, this a little. Okay. Those are pretty axles. Yeah, you know, I never really like. Heard oh, yeah, this, this seal's tired too, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I probably had way too much fucking hydraulic pressure. <laughs> Pissed me off too, because I had to look at this shit in there. Yeah. I had all this was all brand new guts, everything. I dropped the pallet off with everything and had a rear end shot build it and then I fucking <laughs> overfilled it like an idiot. Because they gave it to me dry because I was like, I don't know when I'm going to put this thing in here. Right. So it'll happen. Okay. It's so they work on, you know, right. fast cars all the time or whatever. It's just like from the city truck to your work truck. Totally. So. Gears and rears. Nothing like gears and rears. <laughs> Get out of there, you little shit. Okay, bud, seal time. Orange to go through yellow paint, eh? <laughs> Good thing no one's gonna see it. It's true. Brand new second hand. Just a little lick. Look, it never hurt nobody. Yeah. Pour a little grease in here on the fuck on the. <laughs> Got to remember this. We're filled it in. Hey, nobody's <laughs> just dropping the f bombs. Oh. Tune into the podcast. You'll hear it all. Ready? Um. Yeah. We'll pour a little oil in there. spends three grand back in the day on my teeth and I use it to open oil jugs. Oh yeah. So never forget I got in a little scrum in the bar when I was oh I don't know 18 or 19 and uh, whatever long story short Took a beer bottle to the teeth. To the teeth? Yeah. Knocked out both front teeth. And uh, anyway, wake up the next morning and uh, go up to say good morning to mom and grab a coffee and whatever. So I'm, still, I'm at home. I, I must have been home for the summer or something. And uh, anyway, I said, I'm like, Ma, I don't know what the hell to do here. Eh? She's like, oh, you idiot, right? And the whole time too, like knowing full well that I've been using my teeth as friggin' tools for years. And then I take a beer bottle of the teeth and I uh, knock the front two out. So yeah, back to the dentist before I go back to college, called a favor, small town, thank God. Dentist came in on like a Sunday, <laughs> tuned up my teeth. Oh yeah. Is that, must be anti-seize or something they put on the I yeah, he sees the shit out of everything. Right. 
You want to do the deeds? Just throw your axe in there? Here. Should it be so you don't get all dirty? Uh, no, they're all good. But yeah, just uh, whatever. Take her easy on the uh, seal going in. Yeah, so as you get to the end of it there, buddy, oh, you're not quite there yet, but you'll have to like spline it, like rotate it a little bit. Into position. I like having this apprentice around, right? Hey, okay. you used to that? Uh, you, so we're, is it binding? I'm hitting on something. You might have to, you might have to go up some. Yep. Okay, I might have to wiggle it around a little bit. Yeah, like you're gonna kind of bump the seal a little bit, but. That's all I was trying to not do is yeah. fuck that up. There you go, you're in. You're in. You're in. <laughs> okay, pull her back. You're in there, buddy. Perfect. Boom. Okay. 50% complete. One side done. Yep. I'm interested to see what that is. Like that was the other side. Yeah. Okay. Hey! Okay, ladies and gents, you've had the tour of this beautiful SN95. You've also seen a little bit of mechanic work on it. We got the rear axle seals changed, diffs full, all the Maxim Motorsports bits and pieces that we had to remove are reinstalled and torqued to spec. Kyle's just putting the trunk back together because we actually, in order to get the diff down low enough, we removed the coilovers from the top and uh, it actually, a little bit of jerking around, hey, but it worked out pretty good. Got the diff to settle down where we needed it to, so we get the diff cover off and axles out. And now, I guess the only thing left to do is test drive this thing. I don't know if you guys really wanna see a test drive of this car or not. That's where everybody laughs. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll bring you along for the rip, and uh, yeah, you can see this thing in action. thing about the TMI kit was it was all brand new foams on right. stock seat frames so it's still wow. got the power seats it's still got the lumbar everything right. that would be factory in these seats is factory. I love how you sit so low in an SM right like a fox the windows here these you're just I don't know it's low more of like a cockpit feel right yep but oh, dude you can feel already this thing is small solid. solid right super solid
they're really going. really touchy. No kidding. Yeah, dude. Like it. I've never driven anything that feels this solid. Yeah. It's it impresses me every time I drive it. Oof. Crazy. Just the feedback and response that it gives you is like it's it's it was like driving a completely different car when I was finished with it. Right. Yeah, what a transformation. Yeah. It's been years since I, I was telling you earlier that my buddy had a 94. And uh, I mean, other than just having lowering springs and whatever exhaust on it, that was about the extent of what was done to it. Mm -hmm. But I definitely do not remember it feeling anything like this. No. That was the extent of this car too. Every, every car I've ever had has been lowered to take exhaust. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Maybe a short throw. Yeah. So it was time to step up to the big boy stuff and right Holy. I mean unless you're gonna do one of those like roadster shop full chassis mm -hmm. uh, I think this is about as close as you get to that right yep and you really don't need much more no What a great car. Oh my God. Thing was such a treat to work on too. Such a clean underside. I barely even got dirty. And you know what? If my buddy old Billy Butler's watching, I didn't even put the cubbies on buddy. And look at that. Clean pants, everything. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching folks. I hope you enjoyed some SN95 still in the Fox chassis content. Okay. But uh, yeah. It was a ton of fun to work on that car and definitely a ton of fun to take out for a drive. What a hoot. I've always wanted one of those. I say this on the podcast all the time. I have a very special place in my heart. Actually, there's a, a piece missing in my heart. I would love to have an SN95 Celine car. I just think those are the cat's meow. I think probably in a vert too. Oh my God, love them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching folks. If you are interested, I'm actually going to do a video on this thing right now. If you've caught my last video on restoration remorse, I have not been under this car until just now. So while Kyle was here, we pulled it on the hoist and we ran it up. While pulling it on the hoist, the exhaust got extra loud. I'm like, what was that all about? Well, 
the exhaust fell off. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do a part two to my restoration remorse, which will shortly follow this video um, in somewhat of a timely manner. So if you're interested in seeing the underside of this car, make sure you click on, I'll try and put it up here for you, click on that video and you can see what type of a disaster the underside of this car is. What a heartbreaking mess it is. Anyway, thanks for watching ladies and gents. I really appreciate you and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, bye for now.